Cuyuna engine that was on here. Is that right? A 440 Cuyuna. And uh, the original Culver prop, uh, the Cuyuna engine was sent to a very good friend of the Hawk community in Ohio by the name of Gary Grimm. Gary rebuilt it and sent it back to us and didn't take a dime for it. Is that right? And we sent the prop out to Culver Prop, Valley Engineering, Elena Lewis, and she refinished the, she refinished the prop for us. And uh, it's been a really magical trip for me to, to relive this very important airplane. I'm sure, Bob. It's, uh, I'm sure that's very exciting. Now, you know, when I looked at various aspects of it as we got ready to do this video, I noticed there's, there's lots of holes, there's lots of things that I would go, oh boy, I don't know if I'd be flying this airplane afterwards, but that's kind of a part of the story, isn't it, about the airplane and the prop? Exactly. What exactly. am I talking about here? Well, first of all, ergo the name prototype, because they moved a lot of stuff around as they got the thing into what they had as flying condition back then. But when the Williamsons uh, took the airplane from the EAA, the EAA said, We'll give it to you for refurbishment, but it must never fly again. Because their name got in the ownership. They track. were in the ownership chain, they and that was that, reasonable. Yeah, I mean, we thought they, that can't, was reasonable. they can't risk everything they've got here over this one guy. So. And we don't want people to send Elena Lewis at Culver Prop all their old props, <laughs> thinking that they'll be able to. She's not she going to redo them all. She huh? said no, because we'll redo it only because it's for the hawk and because you say it will never fly again ah yeah and it was the authentic original prop original prop. not like you're redoing some prop that got put on it later this no, is the no. original yeah the original exhaust system that we got with with the plane as well as the very first drive unit and you know chuck was one of the innovators of the the reduction gear drive that was kind of his first four-way foray into uh, powered aviation at all he was a hang glider builder before yeah. that and then yeah. got into redrives and yeah. that was his whole thing for a while this yeah. came along later exactly yeah exactly so that that's the redrive that was on here it says cgs right on that very heavy redrive unit yeah that thing is a <laughs> it's substantial right a boat anchor some would say yes. you know i mean yes. it's that kind of heavy so as you were doing some of this, I mean, this is this. You said this boom back here, which uh, looks all scraped up, but of course it is because it had uh, quite a bit of paint on it. You multiple said. coats, multiple, multiple coats. coats of paint. Yeah, strippies is really good stuff, but not when there's like five or six coats of paint and maybe some body putty on there every, every once in a while. So it's 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 taken us some time, and I actually was surprised when we started taking everything apart that rather than having anodized tubing that we use today. They actually built this, the tubing was not anodized, but they sprayed it with an, with an undercoat. So this, uh, we'll keep this a flat gray when we, when we finish the project. And the back tail section will all be in a bright yellow. Okay, which is the way he had it. Which again. is the way he had it. Both even, colors. Even on the vertical stabilizer where it had the Hawk signs, the little Hawk name there, um, one side was smaller than the other. <laughs> so we replicated the decals with one side smaller than the other to that exact same I wonder same if size. anyone will ever notice that short of you seeing it in this video. Because you got to go around to both sides. I know. Well, I I'm know. not really sure if that's it. And that's probably what they did too. Yeah. Ah, it looks pretty close. Yeah. we got to go to the air show. Exactly. You know how exactly. that works. Exactly. Yeah. But it's, it's been a tremendous amount. Of, it's, and it's truly been an honor. Uh, to be able to celebrate what this Chuck a, has given us for 40 years. This is a piece of ultralight history, no yeah. question about it. Maybe the Quicksilver guys, they go back even further, but uh, but not with not with something that was really for Part 103, because before that they weren't obviously building to that, it didn't right. exist. Right. So yeah. this is one of the original. Now i got to point out something that you didn't mention. There's a lot of structure down here. Yes. Well, in the days when Chuck did this, before 1980, September of 1982, the rule was you must foot launch. Yes. You had to pick these things up and stagger into the air with them if you could. It took a strong young guy to do that even, because uh, you're dragging some part of the airplane and had the engines pushing you and you're trying to get in the air. But anyway, Chuck went, well, phooey on that. <laughs> uh, you know, he wasn't going to run it. <laughs> His running days of hang gliders were kind of over even then. Yeah. And uh, so he said, I'm going to enclose it. Oh, FAA went bananas, oh, right. I realized because that was violating the rule. He was a rule breaker. Right. And then it all got real good after that. So sure he had to take some real initiative to go, nope, it needs to be this way. This is the right structure. This is what I want to do. Three axes in the whole thing, you're right. All of that was brand new then. I mean, we knew how to do it, but right. you got to stay within this tight parameters. And anyway, so that made it an interesting part of the story that all this is really sort of special in that day. That was very, very unusual. He was the only one. Right. And rumor had it, I was not there at that time, but 
Uh, the rest of the community came around when Chuck brought this in 1982 with measuring tape, trying to figure out how do we replicate this. And you know the one story about the boom being curved. Yeah. Our boom tube is, is curved and because it makes that five inch tube stronger and it puts our tailplane right in that prop wash so you always have control and even at slow speeds. Well, Chuck would actually put out disinformation about what that radius was because ah, everybody was trying to figure I out see. what it was. So <laughs> it, was, it was a game that, that he used to play. So I remember asking him way back in the day, I went, that boom looks bent. I mean, these were the days that everything was straight, just like this tube here. I mean, as much as you could make it straight because it was simpler, cheaper, lighter, all that stuff. Right. And I went, well, that's uh, that's got a curve to it. And he went, yeah, it's it's it's, it's radius bent. And I went, what kind of radius is that? I mean, it's a huge thing. And I remember him telling me, it's a 52-foot radius. Like, <laughs> wow, where do you find a machine to do that? Anyway, he was a resourceful guy. And, yeah. uh, and well, it took a guy with a big personality like Chuck's to go up against the FAA and said, this is what we need to Absolutely, do. yeah, this whole non-enclosure. And all, a lot of things he did were like, well, we don't know about that. I can just see the FAA guys going, mm, we don't know about that, but right. but he just persevered and here we are. Yeah. So wonderful that you're taking this back to back to snuff. Now, so it's it's a fairly, I mean, it's coming along. You've done a lot of work on it, I see. I can't even imagine the number of hours, actually, but is are we going to see this at a finished point? Yes, we, we this will definitely be done by Oshkosh. By Oshkosh, and we're planning, okay. We're planning this another year. event this year. Oshkosh. Okay, cool. Yeah, we have the sales in. We haven't put them on yet. Oh, okay. The engine, again, is back. It's sitting on the table. And the engine the run, no, you're not going to run it, I understand. But the engine is running again, you said. That's correct. <laughs> I have a video of it when Gary Grimm said, I finished it, and here's the start. And it may not have been the very first pull, but he said it but was that's the, story, that's, so. that's the story. That's the story. It started the first pull. Right, exactly. And saw it running. But it's not actually going to push the airplane in the air. No, no. Uh, there's like a million holes on that boom tube back there. I'd go, mm, I yes. don't think I want to fly that. Yeah, and some of them, I don't even know why they'd be there, but they're there. <laughs> well, like you said, it was a pro. Ah, we need this thing to go a little bit that way, so fill some new holes. Hey, you got to go to a show. Exactly, exactly. But they flew this quite a bit. Okay, so you're going to have it in Oshkosh, and by then it'll... Well, it won't look like that because it'll be what it was. Right. But, but this is where this airplane has gone to. And I mean, if you kind of look at these, there's a lot of differences between these. So this airplane evolved a lot over the years and became a two-seater as well and some other things. Exactly. But, but 2,500 smiling faces later, yes, sir. Uh, this is one of our success stories in all of ultralight aviation, or light aviation, I should say. Yes, sir. And thank you for that. Yeah. So let's talk just briefly about the airplane that you're now doing. What you got a couple of models. This is your this is your love project, I'll call it. And it's good for marketing too, I think. But tell me a little bit about what you're offering today, Bob. Yeah, we have an ultralight, which this is we call it the Hawk Ultra. And uh, this particular plane weighs in at 253 and a half pounds. Is that right? This one we've had a few different engines on it, and it's it's uh, we have a Polini engine on it right now. Uh, they have a 304, 303 that's 38 horsepower that powers this very well. And uh, we also have an Aero 1, which is a certified single place. Uh, typically, you'll see something in the 50 horsepower range engine on that, Earth, Rotax, whatever. And we also have the Outback, which is actually a two-seat fuselage without a seat in the back, and that back area is dedicated ah, to okay. camping gear, fishing gear, hunting gear. I'll bet you that'll be a popular choice for people. It, it has been. It has yeah. been. We're working on two of those right now for customers, and uh, they want to have that off-airport excursion, land along a riverbank. We mostly do them in tail dragger with a little bit bigger Tundra ah, tires right? on them. Okay. And yeah, for people who don't know, bike, this is available both ways, yes, tail dragger, tail or, dragger or, or nose dragger. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So those are the three models, and uh, as you can imagine, with 2,500 of the airplanes out there, we supply the parts to the single seat side of that, and uh, so the parts, we still make parts for them, so any Hawk person out there needs a part, they can contact us uh, at our website or our email address, and we supply parts to the whole single seat. Okay, that's a lot of great information, Bob. Where do we find out more on the on the web to keep up with your work on this and to inquire about the other lines that you have? Simple, cgshawk.net. Okay, very good. Yeah. And uh, I've got I've written about the Hawk since almost its first day. I think you can find lots and lots of that on my website, along with much other affordable aviation. That's at bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Bob Santum and myself here at Sun and Fun to look at Hawk number one.